Here we'll take a look at how we would solve quadratics or quadratic equations by graphing. So let's review what a quadratic is. A quadratic equation has to have this form. where We have something x squared plus something x plus something equals zero. And the condition here is that a cannot equal zero. So we must have this term. We must have some x squares. Must have x squared term. Coefficients b and c could be zero. So for example, we could have we could have one like this: two x squared plus five x minus six equals zero. That would be a quadratic equation. Um, this would be a quadratic equation: seven x squared plus two equals zero, or minus six x plus ten x squared equals zero. So in each one of these cases, we have x squared as our um, highest power. So these are quadratic equations, and we got to figure out how we are going to determine the roots. That means what are the values of x that I would put in here to make these things equal zero. So there's lots of ways. Equations, lots of ways we can find out the value of x that when I put it in here would set this thing equal to zero. This video will show how we can do that by graphing. So let's investigate how we can solve quadratic equations, equations like these, by graphing. Our first example here, here's a quadratic equation, x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. Remember we can always graph, we can always graph a function by creating an x, y table of values. Well you'll notice that there's no y in this in this equation, but we could easily turn it into a function by just saying, okay, well let's let y equal x squared minus x minus 2. So I just take the equation, this left side of the equation, and set it equal to y. Now I have an x, y table of values. And we could, we could do things like this, make some x values up, and take the negative 3 and put it in for x here. So negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus minus 3 is 12. 12 minus 2 is 10. So when I put minus 3 in for x, we would and we put in negative 2, that's 4. 4 minus minus 2 is 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. Then we could continue with this here, putting these values in. And we would get something that looks like this for a table of values. Now we could create a graph. And we could plot these points on our graph. So when x is negative 3, y is 10. So that's off my, my uh, grid here. When x is negative 2, y is 4. When x is minus 1, y is 0. When x is 0, it's minus 2. When it's 1, it's minus 2. When it's 2, it's 0. And when it's 3, it's 4. And then we could connect, connect the dots here. And we would have a sketch of our graph. Now we're looking for where this thing equals 0. So we would have to look on our graph and we would see, OK, right here and right here. This is where the function y equals x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0. We call these the zeros. Makes sense because they're where the y value is is 0. So where does this, where does x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0? When x is minus 1 we get 0 and when x is 2 we got 0. So our solution would be x equals minus 1 and x equals 2. So using a table of values, we could draw the graph of the function and find out where the x values are zeros. This takes a little bit of time, and sometimes the x values won't be integers like we have here, minus 1 and 2. What if the x value where it equaled 0 was negative 1.23 or something funny like that? 
So we do have graphing calculators and or spreadsheets that can do this job for us, first of all, a lot quicker, and second of all, uh, more accurately. So let's see how we would do this question with a graphing calculator. So here's my graphing calculator, and um, I'm going to go to graph here, and I'm going to enter the uh, equation y equals x squared. So this is the variable button here, x theta t. It'll show up as x. x squared uh, minus x minus 2. And it's drawn that graph, the same one that we did here. Drawn the graph right here for us. And now we can go to our, uh, on this cal calculator, if you go to G solve, F5, graph solve. And what we're looking for are the roots or the zeros of the function. So we hit F1 to find the roots. And it tells us that X equals minus 1. That was one of our solutions. And we hit the right arrow button, and it'll take us to the next one, which was x equals 2. And you can go back and forth between the two roots. So very quickly, with a graphing calculator, we can find the uh, roots of the quadratic equation. For example, we have negative 9x squared plus 12x minus 4 equals 0. And so we're going to solve this using our graphing calculator. So I'm going to enter in negative 9x squared plus 12x minus 4. And now I'm going to draw it. So here's the graph of the function. It's it's kind of just showing up as a tiny little piece here and I got all this dead space over here. So sometimes you got to play with that view window, F3. And I'm going to shrink my x-axis. I don't need to go to minus 6. I'm only going to go minus 2. And I'll go out to about 4, I guess. The scale of 1 is fine. The y values, sure, I, can, I might even go to minus 4, but I don't need to go that high. It looked like only about 1. So there, they, I just kind of blown the graph up there a little bit bigger. I could have still shrunk some space on either side, but... We can see here that the graph looks like it's only going to have about one solution. So if you remember that other one, it, it looked like this. There were two zeros in that first example that we did. But this one looks like it's only going to come up here and whoop, just touch it right here at one spot. So let's see what happens there when we look at that graph. So if I go G solve and I want to find the root, x is 0.66666 repeating here, and and you can see that's the only only root that that there is here. So in this example, we only have one root, and you can see this would be very difficult to find if you were using a table of values. You likely wouldn't think of checking an x value of 0.66666. So the graphing calculator will give us the um, give us a more accurate answer here. So x equals 0 0.6, and I'm going to round it to two decimal places, so 0 0.67 would be the solution to this uh, from the graph. We'll look at one more example here. So this quadratic equation is x squared plus 2x plus 4 equals 0. So we're going to look for some x values that when we substitute them in here would make them equal to 0. We're going to do this by graphing. So I've already got the equation entered here, x squared plus 2x plus 4. So I'm going to draw this. And whoa, here's the graph of our function. There's the parabola shape. But I don't see any places here where it uh, is going to have a y value of 0. So I don't see any roots. And when we go and find root, obviously it's going to say there's not one, not one found there. So in this particular case, there is no solution because there were no x-intercepts. No place where that, that, there's no value of x that when you put that in here is going to make it equal zero.
So to summarize, if we want to solve a quadratic equation by graphing, we would need to graph, first of all, graph the corresponding function. And then once we have the graph, we're going to find the x-intercepts, or some, sometimes they're referred to as zeros or, or roots. So and we've, we've seen in some examples that, that a graph could have, a quadratic equation could eventually have two roots or two zeros. A quadratic function could have one zero. Or a quadratic, quadratic equation could have no zeros. Never, never has uh, a value where the function is going to equal zero. And if these were your solutions, of course, if you took those x values and put them into the equation to check your work, you would see that they equal zero. If in this example, if you took this zero right here, this x value, and substitute into the equation, you should get zero. And in this example, you wouldn't be able to find any x values that you could substitute into the equation and make it equal zero.